Seth Ferose's video, Why I Quit Steroids. This is my response to that. Seth, you are an awesome dude, and your words resonate to me and resonate to millions of men in the world. And this is going to be such an important response video because Seth is 36 years old, and he blasts open the truth of what's happened to him and why he's transitioned off steroids onto TRT. Here we go, guys. Seth, I'm a patriot too. God bless you, sir. Let's go. So, he's 36 years old. Last year, tears his tricep, realizes he has to go to the, the operating room. His doctor runs some labs. Labs look horrible. He opens it right up. Seth talks about his transition from years of steroids, which he loved it. The guy's a beast, man. Come on, Seth. The guy's a beast. Great genetics. The guy's an absolute insane beast. Great genetics, and he took a lot of steroids. Since 19 years old, he talks, so he's 36, 16 years straight. Blasting and cruising, guys. So he, he opens up with, he, he goes to the operating room and the doctors do a pre-op, right? I'm an internal medicine doctor, so we're the ones responsible to clear a patient for the operating room for the anesthesia so they don't die in the table or die subsequently after or have a complication. So they run the labs and on the CBC, he has super high elevated red blood cells, very common, let's talk. His hemoglobin is 19.8, his hematocrit is 58%. His blood pressure is 150 over 90, heart rate is just under 100, so in the 90s. And then he goes on talking about his history. Guys, focus on this. Stay with me on this, and I'm gonna rip through everything here. This is gonna, we're gonna dissect this piece by piece. He has a history of using steroids, we know, for, for 16 years. We understand that he's blasting, cruising on testosterone up to 1,000 milligrams a week. He, he's adding trend. It's amazing, he said, guys, I can't believe I actually would be taking 700 milligrams a week of trend. Seems like he didn't think he would ever do that, but he did, and we all know trend. It's on top of the steroids. He kept looking down to the left. He kept looking to some drawer like he was gonna go into, because he's talking about that he can't do it anymore. Anadrol 50, he loved it. He said he loves Anadrol. That's a very powerful oral steroid. So this man's been exposed to antigens for many, many years. And then he obviously felt great. So it's all subclinical, right? It's all silent. And then all this stuff happens. Now, let's, let's break into it. So he understands that he can't just stop taking steroids and testosterone, testosterone itself. So his doc, and thank God his doctors didn't try to convince him, stop everything and just go away. And, and come back in a few months. This is where there's gonna be severe trouble because he's gonna have massive anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. Okay, this is my calling in life and my research, okay. So he went from very high doses of testosterone, maybe 500, 750, he said 1,000 a week, down to 200. Is that gonna be enough? Is it gonna be enough? We really don't know. So he wants to be on, I want him on, someone like him to be on the lowest effective dose. It's about 100 milligrams every week to every twice a week. You know, some guys can even take 70, 80 milligrams, 0.35, obviously depending on the concentration of the ester itself. You know, every three and a half to four days, some guys just take it once a week. Okay, so that was piece one you talked about, going down to 200. Now, my piece to this is, I've been doing this for so many, many years with thousands of men. He's at risk for having a falling off the wagon for a relapse where he will grab the antidrol because he'll get through this with the grace of God. He's, he'll, he's okay. He'll get through. Hopefully he doesn't have a residual disease and he'll believe that he has to stay on that low dose. Seth, so we have to stay in that low dose of testosterone. You talked about transitioning for your family and for your business to be sustainable. I want to see it and, and I support you on this. You're doing a great job. Your brain will need it. Your muscles will look great. Look at this man already. He can hold that musculature. He can get older and feel great. Wow, that's great. But he's not gonna be a pro bodybuilder anymore. So I leave that to him and you guys because that's your world. Next, let's talk about the red cells. Let's roll the sleeves up. So 19.8 grams per deciliter, 58% hematocrit on the CBC. They phlebotomized him right away. 
So they lowered the testosterone, they phlebotomized, and he said, I believe his hemoglobin was 15 or 16 in the end, and that's then he went to the OR, obviously. Boom. Now, in the future, he even mentioned that he stopped initially and he had phlebotomization done, then he bounced right back up. Okay, so Caucasian men have genes for hereditary hemochromatosis. Now, there are other conditions too that I don't know what he has. That's why the health history is important. This is hematology, guys. So in addition to the CBC, Seth, I'm just not looking at, and this is Seth, you're such a sweetheart. You, you said you're not a doctor, obviously. You didn't even say, you tried not to be a bro science guy too, which is very good, it's very complicated. Doctors know this. They just don't know the effects of steroids and what steroids are. Hematology doctors know this, I promise you. But you have to put this whole you know, ticket together, the team. So, so when you're working with a doctor, you guys have to be educated. You really want to do something called iron studies in addition to the CBC and the hemoglobin. Total iron, percent saturation, and ferritin. You want to put those together because classically, Seth, if you look at those levels, the iron studies, the ferritin, and the percent saturation, it's going to be in the garbage tank because you, you, you just could take off too much. Now, my research and what I've seen over years, if you're not looking at the iron studies, that can cause some problems. We just don't know. Chronically, men don't feel good. They have a flat feeling. We just don't know what ha It's a paradoxic anemia, but you're looking at the hemoglobin when it's normal and you're on testosterone. So there's a lot of vector forces going up and down to stimulating red blood cells, taking off red blood cells, boom. Guys, get a hematology doctor. The app is there, anabolicabb.com, where I'm giving all this information. Be careful, you guys have to understand it. The days of understanding are here with your own education and utilizing your own real doctors, okay, and healthcare providers. Next. Let's go to the real good stuff for me, which is the blood pressure and heart rate. So quick pause for a second here, guys. Chances are you're watching this video, you're on a little testosterone, maybe even some steroids, and your blood pressure is just not right. Maybe you're hypertensive. Very important, guys. You gotta monitor your own blood pressure. You gotta take matters into your own hands now. So check out this monitor. It's a whole monitor. This is the one I recommend for most of my patients for many years, Omron Platinum. If your arm is a little big, even 16 inches or bigger, you're gonna need the big cup, so get that on the side. Guys, go home, take your blood pressure in the morning and at night. Put it together, document it, research it. I'm gonna help you with other videos. And then you need to make adjustments in your life to keep your blood pressure perfect. And if you do that, I promise you, you're gonna stay stronger and healthier for more time and a better quality of life. Boom, the blood pressure and heart rate. So he, he, he controlled that apparently without medicines, just by lowering the testosterone dose, changing his diet, great. And I think it bounced back up, but no. The important piece is, Seth, I wanna to add to what, for you, Seth, you're not a patient, obviously, it's just a suggestion, and we're using you as a great case study. So you, with your, depending on your family history of heart disease, that's gonna be blockers, you know, coronary artery disease. Depending on your lipid panel, you want to get a coronary artery calcium score to see after all these years, Seth, of the androgens, super physiologic. And everything else, the blood pressure, do you have plaque in the artery? Is it silent? This would be a grace, a, a blessing to, to see what you have now, calcium score. Super cheap, super safe, no heavy radiation, no contrast dye, not a problem for the kidney. So. You want to get a lipid panel, because I didn't hear you did that. I'm sure this has been done, but I'm, I'm mentioning this for the guys out there. Okay, lipid. Depending on your HDL, I'll bet you when you were on all those androgens, your HDL good cholesterol is going to be very low. This is, again, chronically a dangerous setup with everything else. You want to get an echocardiogram, guys. Seth would want an echo. His LV is going to be enlarged. All these muscles get enlarged. The LV left ventricle. Seth, do you have diastolic dysfunction or do you have potentially a low ejection fraction? That's systolic issue, systolic early heart failure. It usually guys will feel it, they're tired, they're sluggish. By the time you have ankle edema and, and traditional systolic heart failure, there's a lot of damage. Get the echo, this is why, men, I'm trying to ask you guys to understand, keep the doses down. Don't even do steroids if you don't understand you're gonna have to be on it for life and itself it's gonna have effects on the cardiac system, the red blood cell system, the prostate. So you wanna look at this. Now, 
the treatment for the lipids, Seth. We're not going to put down the stems. You may need them depending on it, but low dose every other day. I'm giving all the secrets. There's Vasipa, which is a brilliant drug. It's a pharmaceutical grade EPA derived fish oil. I'm not here selling these drugs. I'm telling you the truth about the incredible drugs that I use and I have been using for my patients for many years. The last one is the old school, this kind of new school PCSK9 Repathic Proluent. And with these drugs, the PCSK9 drugs, you could have less utility of statins or no statins and you could have reductions and protection from plaque building up and having a heart attack. Next, hemoglobin A1C. You didn't talk about it, Seth, but I know they checked it, the glucose. What if you're pre-diabetic? Maybe metformin's a great drug, but we're not pushing drugs here. I'm just giving everything for one video, the blood pressure. The blood pressure is so many variables related. So lowering just when you're on a thousand milligrams of test and other drugs and trend and everything, who is not hypertensive? You know, young men are usually not hypertensive because they're just so young. They're very elastic. But when you get older in your thirties, even, you start to see hypertension and young men can be hypertensive. Okay. So I understand staying away from drugs initially. I get it. Of course, who's going to just pump drugs and it's a band-aid. But the underlying issue is correct. Lower the effective dose of testosterone you did. Feel great because your brain is obviously not going to feel great. Sex drive and all these things. And look at you. You're saying you're waking up in the morning. You're super motivated for your family and your business. And that looks great for you. You're going to do great. So, but let's understand, guys. My take here, my additional take is low dose ACE ARB bistolic. Bistolic is a drug. It's a nitric oxide donating drug. It's like a Viagra. It really is, or a Cialis. You got to be careful with this stuff, guys. But if you put it together right with a real expert, if you understand, these are internal medicine doctors, not just cardiology doctors, hematology doctors. If you put it together and you're, you, you have the lowest dose of testosterone, keeping your sodium down, keeping the carbs down. He said he was eating the gummies. I thought they were marijuana gummies, but it actually turned out to be real kids' gummies that are full of sugar. But look at the guy, though. He looked great because he has great genetics, so he obviously could eat like crap. He still looked great. He has great, good genes, but in the inside, what's going on next? And the last part, after talking about the heart rate and the blood pressure, the lipids, the echo, the coronary artery calcium score, your family history, the statins, low dose every other day, the PCSK9, the Vasipa, the Metformin, the ACE, the ARB. These are the secrets, guys. You could really take notes on that. You could understand with all my videos. Anabolic.app.com has all this information. The kidney, the last part, I didn't hear you mention the kidney. With years of steroid use, super physiologic, with tons of protein. I'm not putting protein down. I'm just telling you, hypertension, with depending on your genes, and if you use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Motrin and Aleve and Mobic and things like this that are important drugs, when you're training hard, it could hurt the kidney. You want to get a urinalysis. You want to look for the evidence of beginning micro albumin, which is a small amount of protein in the urine. Check the urinalysis. Check the microalbumin creatinine ratio. If you have early FSGS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, this is going to be this triad where I look at the kidney disease, I look at the heart disease, and of course related to steroids. This is important, guys. So I think that about summarizes everything, Seth. Awesome, man. I love your words and where you're going with this. Um, I want guys to give comments. I want to hear everything, what you guys have just happened to you. Are you transitioning to testosterone or off testosterone and steroids? Fertility issues, blood pressure, the cholesterol, the heart rate, the red blood cells. I have so many videos on this. We have, we have a whole area here uh, to view just on red blood cells and testosterone. So I want to thank you guys and, and Seth, you know, because it's an open world now. So many millions of people are using steroids. We have to understand it for harm reduction. And look at his doctors. They look like they did. That's awesome, man. So we just don't say no and blast people and tell them to get the hell out. We're working together. And, but this is complicated internal medicine. So thank you guys so much. I really hope this helps so many young men and any man, any person actually in the world to understand how complex PEDs are and that you really need to understand all this the consequences. Thank you.